My name is Keen Lyons, and I'm the second deputy of the Fifth International. I've gotten to know Keen Lyons well over the last three months. We met through studying the same philosophy course in University College Dublin. I was fascinated by the details of a group he's a part of called the Fifth International, and I asked if I could interview him. So I joined the group in October of last year, so October 2017, and um, so I'm a rank of, I'm a fairly new recruit, but I'm rank of a second deputy, so fairly high up given how recent I am to it. And so we're basically what we are is sort of just like a radical leftist group who will meet up regularly, and we sort of follow this, the idea of sort of this ideology of postism, which is sort of based on the ideas of this man, uh, Juan Posadas, who's a so Ar- Argentinian. Um, Mar- Argentinian Trotskyist from the 60s, 70s, and basically, it's sort of we see we see sort of you know modern mar- capitalism and like sort of history of the last 200 years, and we see all sort of the failed attempts, ideological attempts at various systems over the world. This sort of laissez-faire sort of free market capitalism, which failed sort of like the early uh, you know, early 19th century, sort of to the sort of like modern neoliberalism, which is kind of, which is failing people now. And then even will you look at like say the failed you know the failed communist sort of Stalinist communist revolutions of of the 20th century was we sort of, we see all these and we see sort of the failures of these and and then so we sort of see, see postism as sort of this this coherent and good like good critique of all these systems and sort of see how we it can sort of basically it, it adequately critiques these these systems and their problems and see how we can sort of move politics into sort of a new age and pass a sort of modern political discourse. For the next hour, Keane filled me in on the origins of this group, the Fifth International. It all started in 2015 when a Facebook group called Postedist Memes was created. Members of this group would post humorous pictures pertaining to this outlandish philosophy. This group proved popular, growing to 3,800 members worldwide, and was generally lighthearted. Then something happened. Committed members of this group recognised each other as Irish and began to organise meetups in Dublin. The founder of this Facebook group noticed these developments and found it bizarre and uncomfortable that these people were taking this ideology seriously. The Irish members of these meetups were banned from the original group. But this by no means ended the meetups. They created their own Facebook group and would meet weekly in various bars in Dublin to discuss matters of postedism. The Fifth International now consists of 25 members, and you might see them at bigger protests, such as their appeal marches, with postedist iconography, such as UFOs and dolphins. Postedism is a communist belief system which originated from the 1960s Trotskyist leader, Juan Posadas. It's often described as a strange ideology which has characteristically unusual beliefs, such as a socialist society arising from a post-nuclear war. Readers of Posadas would also be surprised to hear his theories on UFOs and dolphins. Extraterrestrials being possible aids in uplifting society to a communist utopia, and dolphins as intelligent creatures with the possibility to communicate with on a human level. This strange ideology, which was influenced by the context of Cold War politics in the 1960s, found some low-level popularity among workers in Cuba, Bolivia and Brazil. Now, in another time of high political tension, we're seeing a re-emergence of this belief system in Dublin in the form of a small political group. So then, Keen, would you be of the belief then that there will be, you know, some nuclear war in the next decade or so? Yeah, well, I think... um everybody sort of believes that to, to a certain extent. I mean, like, um, you see, it's so present in our current uh, discourse. I mean, you see it on, like, you know, the studio on the cover of The Guardian, Economist, uh, The New York Times, all these places where you, so you have this sort of narrative, like, of an impending nuclear war. And, and like, we've come so close to it in the past. I mean, the last 60 years, we've, we've come close to nuclear annihilation probably, like, three times, at least. And that's the only ones we know of it. Um, so... I think to to a certain extent, everyone sort of believes that we are heading to some sort of nuclear war, some sort of like you know, like defining moment or, or a great apocalypse or whatever. Um, and I think, I mean, just look at the history. Like, um, you know, if we go long enough, if we go along long enough, eventually it's gonna ha- it's gonna happen sometime. Yeah, and I know you were saying there that your sort of beliefs in the group would be sort of closer to the mainstream that one would think, but. You know, what what would your opinions be on then of UFOs? Because, you know, from what I believe, that is a big part of postedism, which the average person would find a little bizarre. Yeah, no, yeah I, I can definitely see that. But it's it's more of like, I mean, you know, um, really, like, you know, if you think the size of the universe, 
um, there's, you know, there's, it's just, it's literally ever expanding. It's infinitely large. There's, there's got to be some sort of like, you know, life forms out there that have some sort of like sufficiently, like, and we talk, and we look at this dialectically. Um, at some point, at, some of these must have gotten so advanced that they achieved some form of communism and are existing in some sort of like, I don't know, like almost like, you know, it's not even science fiction necessarily, but like some sort of like Star Trek esque sort of like, you know, international, Repu interstellar republic or whatever. That's like, you know, yeah, so I, mean, I don't necessarily believe, but like, like I a lot of like, you gotta, gotta look at, you know, Juan Posadas in his sort of, in his time or whatever. I don't necessarily believe all that sort of 60s. UFO, UFO craze stuff, you know, I don't know if, like, you know, area fit, like, we, I, mean, I guess we might never know, but, like... What would your opinions be about all of the dolphin stuff that Juan Posadas talks about? Because, you know, when I heard about that, I found it quite, kind of, in interesting. Yeah, I, I know, yeah, that stuff is obviously, like, people bring that up a lot, and it's a big sort of, yeah, sort of, like, meme online or whatever, <laughs> yeah. but, and obviously, you know, Posadas had those sort of beliefs, and a lot of the early yeah, yeah. posters sort of thought that sort of stuff, but... Like, I think, yeah, I mean, like, no, no, no thinker, no theorist, no revolutionary is perfect. And they all have these sort yeah. of, these wacky beliefs, you know, like, you know, like Trotsky, Stalin, Lenin, all those sort of people have these, like, weird beliefs about, um, like, like, how, like, how genetics work and stuff like that. And these, like, weird evolutionary beliefs like that. Some stuff gets sort of, like, um, mixed up in between. And I think that's, that's probably one of it. I know, obviously, dolphins are, are very intelligent creatures. And you can see why they believe that stuff, but research coming out. But and is, is there any members in the Fifth International that would sort of buy into that? Sort of maybe some more than others, but. Like, I would say, for the most part, it's a pretty reasonable outlook on this sort of thing. Yeah, certainly, you know, when we look at the dolphin as a creature on this earth, there's no doubt in my mind that they're, you know, equal to us in sentience. And, you know, if not surpassing us as, you know, the most intelligent creatures on the planet. Darren Egan, a 26-year-old independent video game designer, joined the Fifth International in July of 2016. King got me in contact with him as a more committed member of the group and the philosophy of posadism. I was interested to see how his opinions differ from that of Keane's. I respect how dolphins are intelligent creatures, but you know, I, I don't really understand how you'd say that they're equal to humans in any way. Well, I think it just comes down to as humans, we, you know, obviously we define our success from our ability to, you know, build civilizations and things but I think we have like a misinformed idea of what a civilization you know what a civilized culture actually looks like we, we dissociate it with you know complex systems of government and infrastructure and this kind of thing but you know for dolphins the reality is that that's just not a possibility for them you know of course they have the intelligence to you know build roads and build bridges and you know form parliaments and this kind of thing but they have you know physical disabilities for one thing they don't have you know as operational, uh, you know, a shell as the human does, uh, a bone structure and this kind of thing. They don't have, although they have, you know, a very uh, admirable system of communication, it's not quite as, you know, uh, refined as the human language. But dolphins, you know, dolphins do operate under a civilization, just, it's just so, it's so far removed from, you know, our narrative of what we've told ourselves civilization is. Dolphins kind of operate under like a, a primitive socialism almost like Marx even talks about this like uh, you know like uh, a primordial sort of communism like uh, it is quite a complex social structure they have down there uh, that's that's a little hard for me to wrap my head around Darren to, to say the least but uh, would you then have sort of similar fringe opinions about UFOs or the whole nuclear aspect to the group I don't, I don't even know how those can be considered fringe aspects in 2018 when we have all like the resources you know, on the internet and in libraries about all this stuff. I mean, even the most basic inquiry into you know, atomic, the history of atomic warfare and the Cold War shows clearly you know, our nuclear capabilities of human. And you know, the doomsday clock is ticking. Like it's, only a, it's only a matter of day. I'd say certainly within the next seven years, we will see you know, large-scale atomic warfare from the most simple inquiry into the, you know, the most like rudimentary research you can see with, you know, Roswell would be a big one, you know, in Siberia in, in the 1920s, the Tunguska explosion. I mean, you would see though how people at home would be just shocked by a lot of things you say, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard to wrap your head around. As far as, you know, the opinions of the general public, I think that's just a case of, you know, continuing the fallacy of, you know, agreeing to, you know, our our public consciousness towards this whole thing. Like, it's right in front of our eyes. Like, the truth is above us. You know, obviously, capitalist governments have done a lot to hide this from us. And, you know, capitalism as an ideology is so entrenched in our beings. It's, you know, it's warped and distorted our psyche so much. But, you know, even, 
you know, as soon as you start studying Marxism, even at the most basic level, you, you know, you will see the truth about this stuff. And, you know, while Marx and Engels themselves, you know, didn't discuss a lot about this kind of stuff, a lot of it does apply and you can clearly see the correlations. And personally, I do believe that, you know, maybe they didn't want to say this stuff, you know, in their writing for fear of being ridiculed. But, you know, the subtext is certainly there. So moving on from the kind of more uh, theoretical stuff, I guess, uh, what has your experience been like in the Fifth International? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've definitely not looked back since I joined. You know, I, I joined in the summer of 2016, and it's just been it's been a lot of fun. It's been I've learned a lot. I think I've taught a lot of, of my comrades a lot of stuff. You know, it's just it's always nice to you know have somewhere where you can go to and you can feel accepted, and you you know you won't be ostracized for your views, and especially when it's you know like-minded individuals who are you know kind of operating on your you know intellectual wavelength, we'll say and you know, hold similar views to yourself. And, you know, it's like, a, it's a real kind of community experience with us. Like, we, you know, we get active, we, we have lots of projects we're doing, we have the upcoming Bunker Project is a big one, which we're I mean, can you can you probably elaborate a bit on these pro? Like, what, what is the Bunker Project? The Bunker Project basically is, you know, uh, every meeting we do, we have, um, you know, Comrade Duke asks for a small, um, you know, little donation, whatever we can, and it's all being, you know, put forward towards this uh, this bunker that he... You know, he plans on building, you know, obviously, you know, um, protection and uh, safety from, you know, the future is a big aspect of what we do. And, uh, yeah, that should be, it's it's very exciting. So, uh, like, you know, where, where do you guys plan on building this bunker then? Um, I, I'm not sure personally that, you know, it's early stages yet. We're only, you know, drawing it up, as they say. It's conceptual stuff at the moment. So that's probably, you know, the council probably knows that. Comrade Duke probably, that's, you know, that's his business. So Com- Comrade Duke, I've sort of, you know, I've heard his name kind of thrown around a bit. So from my understanding, he's sort of the the leader or figurehead of the Fifth International? Yeah, Comrade Duke is the the founder, I suppose, of our of our organization. He's, you know, he's probably the most knowledgeable person in, in the country on this topic. And he, uh, you know, he does, he kind of uh, dictates the group's tra- trajectory and a lot of the, you know, the... You know, the more higher up management goes through him and this kind of stuff. And, you know, he's, you know, and and he, he's just kind of like uh, he imparts any wisdom he might know on us, you know, in, in this field or in, in any other field. He's just, you know, he's he has a lot of wisdom himself and he, you know, he, he gives us a lot of advice on, on lots of different topics and stuff. And he's just, you know, he's someone, you know, I'm very proud to call, you know, my, you know, my uh, superior. So, yeah, there's, it, so there's sort of a, a clear hierarchy within the group and... You know, Keem was saying earlier that he's second deputy. Do you have any role within the group? Not, um, not like uh, I'm yet to receive a position so far. But you know, that is something I would like to do. You know, uh, I haven't gotten a lot of like, you know, one-on-one time with Comrade Duke or a lot of the the higher members yet. But you know, I think uh, yeah, that's definitely something I, I'd like to do. When I started this documentary two months ago, I made a post in the original Positist meme group asking if anybody with info on the 5th International to contact me. A month later, I received an email from an ex-member of the 5th International who left the group a year ago and wanted to share her experience. I asked her to come into the studio upon her request that she be left anonymous. Why did you contact me about the 5th International? Um, I have friends who are still on the Positist meme page and they told me that there was a documentary being done about the group. But you're no longer a member, isn't that correct? Yeah, I left in about in February 2017 and mm. um, I haven't really been in contact with them since. And was there sort of a catalyst for you leaving the group or was it just sort of a, a general disenfranchisement? There was a more serious undertone in the last couple of months when I was working mm. in, um, I worked in a law firm in Dublin as a clerk and he would make comments about how I was enabling the bourgeoisie and mm. stuff. And I, I did have guilt over that. But very quickly after I left my job and stopped being able to fund fund the, the bunker, um, the attitude towards me changed. And I feel like Duke, Duke caused that. He... Mm he very quickly became colder to me. Things were said not really in jest anymore. Mm. I was, felt like more of a burden to the group than anything else. Mm. Um, and at that kind of continued for about five months. Yeah. Once, um, one, that's, that, that started causing problems in itself because 
I started borrowing more and more money off my parents because I felt that I needed to prove that I could still provide to the group. And that caused a lot of tension in my own family. Um, I'm still not on very good terms with my parents. And it continued this way until my brother, he basically pulled me aside and he kind of forced me to see like what I was doing. Um, and, and then eventually I realized that once I kind of stopped being useful to them, mm. I feel they were very quick to cast me out. And so I left then February 2017 and I haven't heard from any of them since. I've been completely ostracized. So how has your life changed the year after since you've left the group? I'd say better. Uh, at first when I left, I felt really alone. I've come kind of to the realization with the help of my family and stuff that the group, they looked after me to a point and then they cast me aside. So I, there's sometimes when I'm at home alone or whatever, I miss them because they were my friends for a long time. But now I know that that wasn't real. And Duke, he isn't the way he makes people think he is. He's, he mm. plays a character. Mm. He's not, he's not a good guy. He's a bully. Mm. That's what I'd call him. Yeah, I guess from, you know, what I've experienced of passwordism, I, I've sort of passed it off the entire time because it's, it always seems there's no more than just, you know, the sort of the fringe and almost failed political movement from POSAD or whatever his name is. So I, it's kind of interesting to think in terms of cults. I'm not sure if it's, a, if it's 100% up there, but sure, I'd be happy to talk about it. Daniel Carlyle is a PhD student in sociology from the University of Strathclyde. His area of focus is in the behaviorisms of political fringe groups. After hearing about the darker side of the Fifth International, I wanted to get his expertise on the dynamics of these kind of small groups. So do you think that the Fifth International exhibits some of the same unhealthy characteristics that you would have studied in any of other groups? Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's sort of five classic characteristics or traits of uh, cults and fringe groups and that sort of stuff. And I think the Fifth International in particular does fit into it. Um, I mean, the main point in it, and the first one as well, uh, is sort of the idea of authoritarian leadership. So obviously with Adam Duke or whatever his name is, that does seem to very much be the case. So that sort of authoritarianism involves an acceptance of an authority figure, and normally they'll exercise excessive control on the cult members, you know, as a prophet or a founder in this case. Well, I guess, you know, Adam Duke, seeing as they came out of this Facebook group, has sort of arise, arisen as, as sort of a, an untheological, prophetic kind of figure, you know. Even though this movement has existed beforehand, he's sort of the person that's putting it into motion and sort of uniting these people together and taking the, the donations off them as well. Um, but that also involves some sort of legalistic submission to the rules. So obviously in this case, we have sort of the idea of the Bunker Project. Is that what you're saying it was called? Yeah, the Bunker Project. That's the, the contributions yeah, so we, every week. Yeah, paying this sort of uh, this membership fee almost to be able to uh, fit in because there was that sort of alienation mm. uh, with the the lady who was speaking to you about you know when you don't pay mm. you're not really, you know you're going to be ostracized by everyone else and that that sort of plays into the second key trait of a cult which is exclusive exclusivism oh interesting yeah and see the thing is cults often believe that they alone have the truth mm. and then the cult itself will view itself as a single means of salvation or, you know, political transcendence or whatever, you know, crazy dolphin shit it is on Earth. So, you see, even though your contact's faith was still there in the movement, and she still very much supported, the, you know, the, the idea or the concept of the Bunker Project, her sort of being cut off by her parents and no longer being able to provide the fiscal means um, to fund whatever it is that Mr. Duke was doing with the money, that led to her disenfranchisement. And I'm sure, you know, there's sort of a sense of personal dread before even the social element of it kicked in afterwards. So, I, I mean, that'd be sort of my main take on uh, the Fifth International right now. I got Keen back into the studio to talk about some of the things I had since learned about the Fifth International. I wanted to hear his responses on some of the more troubling aspects of this group. 
Yeah, no, I'd, I'd heard of someone who had, who had left the group previously, but I never, like, I never really know much about it. It's obviously some sort of, like, it's like it's it's sort of one of those things where you join a group, like, yeah. I, to the best of my knowledge, she was someone who was in the group for a while and uh, had some sort of falling out or something. I'm, you know, I'm not sure. And, like, and she sort of just parted ways. So she's, so she would have left before your time, kind of, so you wouldn't yeah. really have known. No, no, I don't know. I, no, personally, I, I don't know her at all. Um, I, I got the impression that, like, like I don't know, that there, there, was some, there was some sort of disagreement and she just left. Mm. Well, you know, the, the reason why I kind of brought her up was because, you know, she, she personally would have a more sort of negative take on the entire group, you know. Uh, she was sort of describing it as sort of... Uh, uh, the community in it as sort of troubling her at the time. It's so like, like you know, like with any other sort of political group, there'll be you know there'll be disagreements, you know, stuff like that. The clashes of ideology, it's like that people have different interpretations. Well, well, I I suppose like looking at some aspects of group, it's it's it doesn't seem to me like that average political group. Like there are some the aspects of you know uh, l- trusting in sort of uh, Duke and giving him sort of the contributions it from an outside perspective it's it seems kind of strange like, i know yeah obviously yeah sure we have these wacky beliefs or whatever but I, yeah like but i don't think that's like that's that's like really fair like and, and like bring it up like like duke like duke is you know he seems like a, a strange you know person or whatever but this is all like the, the bunger is part of the whole you know fucking thing at the end of the day it's part of like it's the main like focus of our project so like if you if you just take these things at like any sort of like an honest perspective and actually honestly engage in any sort of ideas you'll you'll see that like that this is like it's very it's very important to us obviously and it's very important to this this whole you know project yeah like i just, I just feel like it's it's weird like and you you're talking about this this you being some sort of research research student to talk about it with my fringe groups or something I yeah. don't like I, I thought this this entire thing was supposed to be like like an expose into this like this group or whatever but it seems like almost you're using it for us well, for like a study or well, something well not really because you know uh, from from my research at a group there was these sort of more unhealthy aspects of it that you know it comes along with the ground of a documentary yeah, no, but we're not like we're not we're not some sort of like like we're not like a, a species of fucking like frog or whatever you can you like you just you, you like you dissect into or something i don't can we just pause the interview for, for a bit i'm not too like too comfortable about this stuff anyway five minutes later keen returned to finish the rest of the interview yeah no i'm i'm sorry about like you know like obviously i get a bit emotional about this sort of stuff but yeah, I, I agree to do um do the documentary so it's like i know I, yeah obviously you're coming at this from trying to come from like a neutral perspective mm-hmm. and look at the different things so. There's no problem with that. So I get a bit when I when I first joined this group, I was in a, like a pretty you know dark place myself. I, I was sort of I was I was sort of dropping out of college a little bit, um, and this sort of and like I, I was having a you know, sort of I was a bit a bit depressed coming coming out of some sort of you know things weren't working out just as I thought it was going to. And when I was and I was when I was introduced to this stuff and I was introduced to this group in particular, it really did sort of center me a lot more in that sort of sense. Like it made me it sort of it filled in sort of the gaps I felt like I wasn't really feeling. And, and it gave me a place that, like, you know, I could really feel that, you know, something was happening and, like, in a more intimate sense. That, like, I joined, I, I drifted between leftist groups in the past, but it, it, it all felt so, um, I don't know, immaterial or something or sort of, like, very, I don't know, vapid or something. There wasn't a lot going on. So it's, it's I, I can get a little bit touchy, about it, especially because, you know, the, it's, it's the sort of abnormal nature of it. And I guess, you have, like you said, the fringe nature of it makes it seem a bit, um, makes, make, you know, makes it seem a bit... Uh, weirder than it is, and I, I kind of respond to that in a bit negative way. But you know, I, I, I uh, you know, I think if you if you come to one like uh, if you come to one of the, the meetings at some point, you'll see that it's really more level-headed and more sort of um, grounded than, than you than you think about it, and that anybody would think about it just from hearing about it. The following week, Keen and Darren brought me to a fifth international meeting. It was in the basement of the Stag's Head. The meeting consisted with a discussion between members of the group and ended with a speech by the chairman, Adam Duke. I was asked not to record the meeting. However, afterwards, I managed to arrange a small interview with the chairman, Adam Duke. Yeah, so that's what I mean. I mean, it's quite quite subterranean, you know. The, uh, the light refracts almost instantaneously upon entry. You know, you need electricity in here. You need the support of your fellow man to... To, to even be able to see inside this place. So, you know, that's really why I like the basement of the Stag's Head for this meeting, because it quite it very much stimulates the type of environment that we'll be living in. How how did the group sort of start up, and what are sort of the dynamics of how the group runs? OK, look, uh, look, I've been lonely, you've been lonely. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the capitalist condition. 
it keeps us feeling alienated from one another. Social media does this especially. I, you know, I felt there was no one out here that shared the ideology as me. You know, no one loved dolphins as much as I did. No one thought socialism could function like I did. Then I found this meme page, and I thought, oh, oh great, there are people like me out there. I, I'm not the only one. And, you know, it, it's great that I really, I started this group, it grew out of the Facebook page, you know, I just put up an invite, I said, hey, let's actually do something with this, you know, I, and much like Marx himself, I felt like I was using the tools of capitalism against itself, you know, I, I, this group grew out of Facebook. Uh, okay, yeah, um, I kind of get what you mean a bit, but um, I get how one of the kind of purposes of the group is these weekly meetings to kind of, you know, discuss uh, post-list ideas, but I, can't, I wanted to ask you about sort of the other projects of the group, such as, uh, you know, the bu- I've heard a lot about the Bunker Project, I know it was kind of discussed tonight a bit. Ah, uh, yes, yes, the fiendish Bunker Project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, look, there's, there's people out there that would have you believe that this uh, bunker is somehow nefarious, or that it's some sort of pyramid scheme or something it's not it's not look when the nuclear war happens and it is happening uh, yeah, I uh, we will need a bunker to, to hide out in and that's why I get these weekly contributions for it. they go towards the bunker they go towards a place where we can live safely and in harmony when the bombs start dropping so I, I also wanted to get your response though on some of the criticisms of the group like I, I've been hearing sort of uh, stories from ex-members that there's a lot of unhealthy behaviour going with, on within the group and that, you know, the group, or, you know, in particular you, have some undue influence on members. Do you have a response to that? Oh, well, look, I mean, like, you're talking about criticism. Uh, look, there's one critic, I mean, I know who you're talking about, and I'm, I'm aware of the criticisms of the group, the critic of my group. There are far more voices on my side... You know, that I think our answers all that criticism. I've well, studied the criticism very well. well. But one would Look, say that the, that wouldn't validate sort of any criticisms that went on within the. Uh, I, 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 look, I think you just you need to listen to the voices on my side, the voices of that critic. Uh, I think we all know who comes out on top. Anyway, look, as um, uh, I, I really do need to be getting on because I have important work to be doing. But look, I, I see myself as both an artist and an intellectual. As a fellow artist and intellectual said, to flip a phrase, to borrow a phrase from fellow artist and intellectual, the problem with the bourgeoisie is we spend too much time on practices, on devices such as this, trying to nitpick individuals and, and you know, create these these entertainments that we listen to and things like that. So look, uh, look, like the plant seed photosynthesis our group continues to need support to grow and expand. So if anyone listening to this would care to join, look, please come to one of our meetings. When my time with the 5th International came to an end, I had to reflect on some of the things I had been brought up and what the implication of this group was. The beliefs of the group were often bizarre, nonsensical, and at times, outright despicable. But one of the things that was most striking to me was that it was filling something that was missing in their lives. I thought of Keen and his problems before joining the group. And I wonder if he'd continue to be a member of this community, or if he would go the way of the ex-member I spoke to. This is something that, as a society, we have to reckon with. Is this an anomaly? Or are we seeing a disaffection in the youth of today which is manifesting in a prop up of these radical fringe groups that we see throughout the world? And maybe the positivists are right. As Juan Posada says, maybe nuclear war will end the hash between Stalinism and capitalism, and from the ashes of our dead society will rise a socialist society anew.